Good evening. And wow, certainly is a great day to be a Royal. If you were at the uh, two basketball games today, uh, good stuff. Two wins that uh, we desperately needed. And uh, now we get to continue the fun and uh, honor our inductees here this evening. Uh, my name is Dave Martin. I'm the Executive Director of Athletics here at the University. And it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you here this evening to our 48th annual uh, University of Scranton Athletics Wall of Fame induction ceremony. To get the evening underway, it is my privilege to introduce our Vice President for Student Life, Dr. Bobby Davis. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. I'll be brief. I've actually donated my time to Chris Sahoulis, who I heard has a lot to say. So um, he, you'll hear more from him later. But I just want to add my welcome to all of you. This is a great crowd. Uh, we've come out to honor six really well-deserving individuals for their achievements. But uh, it's great to see everybody here. I, I, I think where, where I want to start maybe is with, could I ask the people who are members of the Wall of Fame to stand up and be recognized? The crowd we have today is pretty good. So if you're a member of the Wall of Fame, could you please stand up? We do recognize you here for being here. So this is part of a great tradition. Dave will talk a little bit about the process of becoming a member of the Wall of Fame. Many of the people who vote on that are here today. They take it very seriously. I'd like to maybe take this moment and remind them that I was a four-year letter winner of baseball. <laughs> If you don't know why that's funny, you didn't see me play baseball, so. Uh, but really, on behalf of our university administration, faculty, and staff, I really want to thank you for being here. Athletics is really at the heart of what it means to be a Catholic and Jesuit university, and it, talk, it really speaks to the formation that we try to provide students when they come to the University of Scranton as, as young people, transformed, hopefully, at the end of their experience to go out and, as St. Ignatius says, set the world on fire. So today, we honored six individuals who we think not only were wonderful examples of athletic excellence while they were here at the University of Scranton, but they're also role models for our students and for our alumni communities for what type of people we hope will be associated with the University of Scranton. So uh, on behalf of, of all of us here today, I want to just congratulate those people who were inducted today. It's well deserved and thank you, uh, thank you everyone for being here tonight. Thanks, Bobby. The, uh, the Wall of Fame is a joint undertaking between athletics and our university advancement team. What I would like to do at this time, as Bobby mentioned, the, the, the folks on our Wall of Fame committee put a tremendous amount of time into this, take it very seriously. What I would like to do is recognize uh, our committee. When I call your name, if you could please just stand at your seat, and I will ask you to hold uh, your applause until, until the end. Uh, Steve Klingman. Former athletic administrator, uh, men's soccer coach, and uh, Wall of Famer himself. Colleen Murphy Pivarato, assistant athletics director, senior woman administrator, and our head women's soccer coach here at the university. Randy Shemansky, our associate athletics director. Eric Eckenrode, executive director in university advancement, and Eric oversees. A lot of you get uh, mail from, from Eric. He is our director of athletic development as well. So. Now you can put a, a face with a name. Um, Dr. Dave Zurich. David is our, uh, he's a professor in history here at the university and is our faculty athletics representative. Mia Kalarini Wascura. Mini, oh yeah. <laughs> Mia is uh, a former student athlete here at the university and is our women's softball coach. Uh, and John Gatto. John is our sports information director. I'm not, John's probably wrapping up the, uh, the women's game and isn't here. But this group of, of individuals put a lot of time into this. We have a ballot. We go through the, the, the ballot uh, tooth and nail, uh, scour it, comb it, vote, come back, discuss it again. They put a lot of time and effort in. So I just wanted to thank them for their, their hard work in this undertaking. There are a few other people that I need to thank. I would be remiss if I, if I didn't mention them and, and recognize them. Uh, first is Aaron McGuire. Aaron is probably hiding out in the, uh, in the hallway. Aaron is our operations manager in athletics. And Aaron is really the person that uh, she gets stuff done in athletics. If you talk to any of our coaches, they'll tell you that she certainly is the straw that, that stirs the drink and does a great job for us. But Aaron does a lot of the behind the scenes work here. So we thank you, Aaron. Yeah. 
to thank uh, Franny Mancuso. Franny is probably standing out in the hallway right next to Aaron because they don't like the, the limelight. Franny is uh, events planner uh, supreme. She is unbelievable, does a great job for the university in managing and planning a number of events on campus and uh, she is really the person again behind the scenes that gets all this set takes care of the menu those types of things so thank you Franny three, three other uh, folks that I've already mentioned but again I would be remiss they, they go above and beyond uh, Eric Eckenrode who does so much of the legwork and I think all of our inductees have had correspondence from Eric uh, just we're, we're really fortunate here at the university to to have Eric uh, on our staff and he does a great job so I, I'd like to thank him for all of the extra work that he does uh, Randy Shemansky who is our associate AD Randy uh, was our sports information director prior to being promoted into the associate AD role so Randy knows a lot of the of, of the behind the scenes work and, and does an awful lot of the the legwork uh, I wanted to thank him publicly. And then the, the, the final guy that I need to thank who is not here, but a, again, he's on our committee, John Gatto. I think John had correspondence with all of our inductees as well. Uh, just does a great job of pulling the program together and getting the pictures for the plaques and those types of things. So this is really a, uh, a joint undertaking uh, and there's a lot of work that goes into this. So thank you to all of those folks that are involved. Uh, before we get to our inductees uh, this evening, uh, I too would like to just recognize and thank uh, all of the Wall of Famers that have come back. This is a great crowd. We have standing room only, and there's a number, number of folks in, in the room tonight who uh, have already been inducted into our Wall of Fame. We have an unbelievable history and tradition, and it's great to see so many of you come back and, and participate and be a part of this. So with that said, uh, it gives me great pleasure to call to the podium our first inductee, Brooke Hinkley Farrow, uh, class of 07 volleyball. Lucky me getting to go first. <laughs> Good evening everyone. Thank you so much to all of you for being here and I want to thank the university and the athletics department for the wonderful ceremony and for this reception tonight. So when I was thinking about what I wanted to share and keep it short and simple, um, most of you probably know that towards the end of my junior, junior volleyball season, I ended up um, in a car accident and broke my back. Um, and so when you hear someone broke their back, you don't think you can really come back from that. So what I wanna share is the fact that when I look back at that time in my life, <clears throat> I don't look back with dread. And I don't look back that that was a horrible time in my life. I can only look back with gratitude. Gratitude to God for helping me get through it and recoup as quickly as I did and let me play my senior year. Gratitude to my parents who are standing back there and my sister Gratitude to my husband that I met shortly after the accident <laughs> and he didn't get scared away by my heavy white back brace that went from my chin to my hips. <laughs> um, and gratitude to the university community, my teammates, my coaches, my classmates, my teachers, for all of the love and support through the days and the weeks and the months after that accident. Um, Again, I can only look back with gratitude and the University of Scranton was such a big part of that. So thank you for this honor, of course, but more so for being there in that time in my life. Thank you. Congratulations, Brooke. What a, a, great, what a great story, truly an inspiration. Uh, our next inductee, Beth Hallett, who's a head coach here for 15 seasons with our women's field hockey team. Beth. Again, many thanks for this honor and deep appreciation. And this really means a lot to me. I started here in Scranton when I was 27, and this was 
here for, I was here for 20 years, um, and it just has been a very important part of my life um, as an adult. I've gone on to other institutions, and nothing matches uh, what Scranton has to offer in terms of its uh, education and development of young people into adults. And um, I'm just really appreciative to be honored uh, this very day. Thank you to all the committee. Thanks to Steve for uh, supporting me through this process. And um, enjoy the rest of the evening. Once again, congratulations, Beth. Uh, our next inductee, please help me in, in welcoming Liz O'Connor Huck to the podium, class of 03, women's soccer. So I have a few things written down, if that's okay. First of all, good evening, and I'm thrilled to be here today amongst such talented athletes, scholars, coaches, and fans. Congratulations to my fellow inductees and to all those who have previously been inducted into the University of Scranton Wall of Fame. I'm grateful for all those who have supported me throughout my soccer career and throughout my life, especially my mom, who supports me through everything, my dad, who often scheduled his business trips around my soccer schedule, my siblings and their families, my friends, and of course, my husband and son. I would especially like to thank my Scranton teammates, Recently, I had a conversation with my 14-year-old niece about her new soccer team that she was playing on, and she mentioned that she wasn't playing very well. She told me that she was never in the right position. She didn't trust her teammates to play their positions, so she compensated for them by trying to play theirs as well as her own. Reflecting on my own soccer career, I realized just how very much I trusted each of my Scranton teammates and each of my coaches to do their job, and how much their trust in me allowed me to do my job and to play my position to the best of my abilities. During my four years here, we saw some great successes, broke many records, played in four NCAA tournaments, and beat teams at the last minute. One year, we even gave up only three goals in our 24 game season. We did all of this while having fun, we trusted in one, in one another's skills and abilities, and we knew that we would be supported on and off the field. So there is no doubt that without my incredible teammates and coaches, I would not be here today. One quick story. I also want to thank the Wall of Fame Selection Committee, because a few months ago I was coaching my son's first grade soccer team. Unfortunately, on this particular evening, the equipment shed was locked and we did not have any equipment. No soccer balls, no cones, no pennies, no goals. They were ready to play, and I had nothing. Now, in addition to playing college soccer and having an amazing coach and example in the late Joe Bocchicchio, I coached middle school and high school level soccer, so I had a few ideas how we could make this work. We were thankfully able to scrounge up three soccer balls, a tennis ball, a few sweatshirts that we could use as cones. Driving home from practice that night, I was feeling quite good about how practice went. Then my son asked me, Mom, why did you make us pass the ball so much tonight? I proceeded to explain that <coughs> passing is an important part of soccer, to which he quickly and exasperatedly responded, well, next time, can we at least have a real coach teach us? <laughs> so thank you to the University of Scranton Athletic Department and Wall of Fame Committee for giving me some credibility with my <laughs> six-year-old son. <laughs> so the University of Scranton is a special place that I was blessed to call home for four years. The University of Scranton women's soccer team is a group of women who I will forever be blessed to call friends. Thank you again to all of you who have supported me throughout my career. God bless. Congratulations, Liz. Our next inductee, 
Uh, Kathleen Daly Jordan, women's basketball player, class of 08. Kathleen. Thanks for the introduction, Dave. Good evening, everyone. I also have something prepared because I've got a lot of thoughts and emotions, so hopefully this keeps me, you know, not too long-winded. Uh, but I want to begin by first thanking President Father Pilars and the University of Scranton, Dave Martin, of course, and the, the athletics program. Hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, the Wall of Fame committee, of course, and, and everyone that made today's events possible. And, and to my family and friends here tonight to celebrate this really special occasion. I'd like to also take a moment to congratulate my fellow inductees. It's an honor to share this recognition with you. This award recognizes accomplishments I made on the basketball court, but it was also the education I received as a whole person off the court that I think contributed to my overall success as a player. And I certainly did not get here on my own. Thank you to my parents, mom and dad. It all started with you. The countless hours and dollars spent on programs, camps, tournaments. I like to think you had as much fun as I did along the way, <laughs> if not more. <laughs> to my siblings, thank you for being here. A special thank you to the university's campus security for allowing my brother uh, back on campus tonight considering uh, he got escorted out of the log center uh, during my final game for yelling at a referee. <laughs> it's true, it's a true story. If you know Jimmy, you'd understand, you'd believe it. Um, but Jimmy, you were my first opponent, my first friend, thank you for all the driveway games and for not going easy on me. Uh, to my sister Mora, who always showed up, whether she wanted to or not. <laughs> uh, having her in the stands motivated me game after game, and her presence in my life continues to bring me great joy. And to the family I created, this is where hopefully I keep it together, um, my husband Peter, my best friend, my college sweetheart, my partner in life. You didn't miss a game since we started dating junior year, which meant you gave random folks rides to away games, and you also wore a t-shirt that said real men wear purple to cheer me on. <laughs> From the Soko and Lime shots on Vine Street to raising our two little girls in Scranton, thank you for being there through the highs and the lows. You are part of my basketball story, but the story we're writing as parents to Annie and Rosie is my greatest dream come true. And to my extended family, some in this room and some looking down on us, my in-laws, Tom and Barb, Tommy, you all have had your own accomplishments that inspired me along the way. To Coach Strong, you pushed me to have the confidence I needed to fulfill my potential, which wasn't an easy task. And I think I surprised you at the end of it all. I will forever remember your knowledge of the game and your clipboard. <laughs> and to my many assistant coaches, Deanna, who's here tonight somewhere, um, and many others, uh, my high school and youth coaches, Specifically, Coach Biggie E is here too, um, who was there in the grade school years. You put me in a position to excel, teaching me the fundamentals and how to push myself. And of course, to my teammates, especially my four sisters in basketball. <laughs> Steph, Michelle, Marissa, and Julie. Sorry, give me a You're my home away from home for four years. My second family, <clears throat> excuse me, you gave me memories I will forever cherish, a bar to set for my own daughter's friends, and without you by my side, this would not be possible in any way. And I can't forget my friends and classmates in the stands who created posters, painted their faces, traveled to the final fours, and were there to cheer me up after losses. I don't quite know what I did to deserve this honor but I want everyone to know just how truly grateful and appreciative I am to be standing up here and to be able to say that I am on the wall of fame for the University of Scranton as a Lady Royal. It's just, whew. It's one thing to wear the Scranton name, to be in the company of excellence is something I will treasure forever. And as I continue to fulfill different roles in my life as an alum, I will continue to strive for excellence to represent this university. Thank you so much.
Once again, congratulations, Kathleen. And uh, Jimmy, thanks for behaving yourself. I didn't want to have to escort you out of there tonight. <laughs> Uh, please join me in welcoming our next inductee, Aaron O'Connor Lentini, Women's Swimming, Class of 2009. Good evening. I want to start by thanking the many individuals on the Hall of Fame Committee for making today's event possible. I also want to congratulate the other inductees that I get to share this special honor with today. So I want to begin my story today at the young tender age when a good day at the pool was some Marco Polo followed by some go fish. When I was five years old, my family belonged to a summer swim club. The coach was looking for new team members and all my little friends were joining so I decided to do the same. The first meet of the season, I lined up behind the block and was preparing my belly flop jump to begin my doggy paddle across the pool. A gun signaled the start of the race, and naturally, instead of jumping in, I cried, because the sound scared me. As the season progressed, I would learn all four strokes and collected ribbons for each swim. I kept receiving blue ribbons, and finally I asked my coach when I get the pink ones, since that was my favorite color. Fall came, and we all joined the local YMCA, and thus began my swimming career, which spanned 17 years, and left my skin dry, my hair brittle, and gave me a fresh, fragrant smell of chlorine. <laughs> my journey to the University of Scranton started like so many of my peers. I attended open houses at prospective schools, met with coaches, and scheduled overnight recruiting trips. Like so many seniors in high school, I had a hard time deciding what college to attend, but I was certain that I wanted a school I could swim at. Finally, I had my decision narrowed down to two schools, one of which being the University of Scranton, of course. I contacted Tom Evans, the head coach at the time, and scheduled an overnight recruiting trip. I remember bits and pieces of my recruiting trip weekend, but what stood out to me most was how friendly and welcoming the team was, and how I felt I had found a home. I vividly waking up the next morning and sneaking into the bathroom and calling my mom and whispering that Scranton was the school for me. I felt no need to look any further or schedule another um, visit at a university. This was the start of my future, where I would make so many memories, meet so many special people, and the rest of my adult life would begin. I want to take this time to thank a few of those very remarkable people that made my four years at Scranton so memorable and helped form me into the person I am today. To Tom Evans and Paul D'Angelo, my coaches, for making swimming so rewarding over my four years at the university. Tom, you are a natural motivator in and out of the pool. Your pre-meet speeches made me feel like I could achieve anything. You were more than just a swim coach. You frequently checked in on us and inquired about our studies and asked if we ever needed any assistance. Personally, you always made me feel like I was more than just a swimmer to you. And Paul, who ran the morning practices, you knew just what we needed to get us up and get us in the mood to swim. It's hard enough to get up at five in the morning during the cold winter months at Scranton, let alone jumping in a freezing cold pool. Once we showed up on deck, you would have music playing and your energy was infectious. To you, every opportunity to get into the pool was a chance to swim a new best time or even break a pool record. To my fellow teammates, you made up many, if not all, of my Scranton memories. Together, we enjoyed practices, away meets, bus rides, weekend celebrations, training trips to Miami and Puerto Rico, and always meeting at the fountain before meals. What I will always remember most is how we pushed each other to be the best athletes we could be and constantly encouraged each other to achieve a personal goal set against the clock. I can say we graduated from Scranton, stayed close, and will later go on to be in each other's weddings. I'm grateful and honored to celebrate today with you. To my husband, Alex, who was also a fellow swimmer and captain, you were my personal cheerleader and trainer during my four years. I now appreciate the times you brought me into that intimidating weight room for a quick lifting session before meeting up with the team for, for dinner. Our spark would first begin on our training trip to Puerto Rico and would later lead to my favorite memory on campus. At an alumni meet in 2011, you insisted we walk around campus during a light flurry and then got down on one knee and proposed like a scene out of a Hallmark movie. 
Now, at eight years married and three beautiful children, I thank my days at Scranton for bringing us together. And finally, to my parents. Mom. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't let me quit swimming in high school when morning practices um, started with my team and I was complaining that swimming was cramping my social life. You truly don't know how much it meant for you to both be at every, every meet, both home and away, and I was able to look into the stands and feel your support. I can't thank you enough for the many, many, many sacrifices you have made. You both are one of a kind and a great example of support I want to one day show my own children. In closing, one last funny story. Um, I remember vividly um, this many years later walking into the Byron Center for a recruiting event and I would walk up to the swim table that coach Tom and several swimmers were standing behind and Tom you were always so sincere and I remember you saying and I quote I can't promise you will swim your fastest times or set pool records but I can promise you will gain lifelong memories and friendships if you attend Scranton and yes thank you you kept your promise thank you again <laughs> Once again, congratulations, Aaron. Our final inductee this evening, uh, baseball player, class of 2009, Chris Sohoulis. Chris. Thanks, Dave. Um, I used to think that they saved the best for last, but I can assure you that not only am I the least accomplished on the stage, but after those speeches, this will also be the worst. <laughs> um, so before the, the actual induction uh, this afternoon, Coach Bard had me speak to the team. And uh, a little bit of what I talked about with them was opportunity. Um, and I can't help but think that it was, it was really the opportunities that I was given in life that allowed me to be standing here today. Um, I grew up with two parents who are both back there now, um, who gave me the opportunity to be me. Um, for those of you who know, know me, that's certainly something. Uh, part of that, though, was, was playing this game. Um, from a young age, I had Little League coaches who gave me the opportunity to learn the game the right way. Uh, from there, I had a high school coach, a crazy high school coach, uh, but a high school coach who gave a freshman the opportunity to play from day one. Um, and really athletically, uh, it culminated here at the university uh, with Coach Bart, who trusted me from the beginning, not only to play, uh, but to lead his team. And in large part, it was those opportunities, um, you know, that allowed me to be standing here right now and allowed me to be successful uh, in my life. Married to my beautiful wife. I have three great friends who are here with us. Um, and I, I honestly cannot be more thankful for all of that. Um, and so really, I just want to thank everyone um, for allowing me to be me, uh, to play a game that I love to play at a school that I love to be at uh, with a group of guys, a coach, and family and friends that I truly could not have asked more of. Um, thank you all. Thank you uh, to the Athletics Department, the Wall of Fame uh, Inductee Committee, um, and honestly, all of the awesome inductees today. Congratulations, Chris. And once again, congratulations to all of our inductees. Each and every one of you has uh, made a major contribution to the history and the tradition of what is Scranton Athletics. And uh, we're thrilled that you were able to come back today and, and celebrate with us. So, so thank you for being here. Thank you to all of the uh, family and friends that are here attending tonight. I would remind you that uh, as soon as we're finished here on the fifth floor in the uh, Rose Room, we do have a uh, reception. Uh, so we invite all of you up to, uh, to join us there. One final housekeeping detail. Uh, circle your calendars, June 22nd. Uh, our biggest fundraiser in athletics, the uh, Carlissimo Golf uh, Tournament and Award Dinner, June 22nd at the Philadelphia Cricket Club. And it gives me great pleasure to let everyone know. Eddie, step in here, will you please? <laughs> Eddie. I, it, it gives me great pleasure to be able to share 
Uh, Ed Karpovich, who is our golf coach, who's been involved with the university for, for some 40 years. Uh, he's on the Wall of Fame. He was a, an All-American golfer here. This year, Ed will receive the Peter A. Carlissimo uh, Award for outstanding contributions to uh, Catholic higher education and athletics. So uh, we're, we're going to honor Eddie on the 22nd. We hope if you're a golfer, come and play golf with us. If you're not a golfer, come to the dinner and support uh, Scranton Athletics. But uh, again, can't thank you enough for being here tonight. Uh, as the Royal Way says, wherever we go, whatever we do, we are Royals. Go Royals. Thank you for being here. Enjoy the reception.